From the station that's on your side, you're watching Friends at Five. And thank you so much for being with us on this Wednesday for Friends at Five. I'm J.R. Barry, And I'm Lauren Thomas. Both Darcy and Andrea have the day off. A $35 million increase in 158 new employees. That's what the DSS director is asking for. And the request was announced at a budget discussion today with the Finance, Health and Human Services Subcommittee. News 19's Joyce Coe was there and joins us now with more. Well, Lauren, about halfway through today's meeting, Senator Lori took a moment to remind the room that it was actually the first subcommittee meeting since losing Senator Clemente Pinckney in the Charleston massacre. As the Department of Health and Human Services presented their budget ahead of DSS, Lori said Pinckney would have had a lot of questions for the director as affordable health care was one of those things that he championed. Following that, though, DSS Director Susan Alford took the seat to discuss her plans to lawmakers. Many of Alford's requests to senators were also in response to recommendations made by the legislature Legislative Audit Council. Alford says the agency needs employees for everything from keeping track of records to investigating fraud. Last year, the state approved the addition of 177 caseworkers, but still, there are many who have double to quadruple the amount of cases they should as the agency continues to, cheek to seek that child welfare reform. Senator Lurie says the General Assembly needs to make this one of their top priorities in the next legislative year. We've got a lot of work to do, and, and I think there's an opportunity to make what could have been one of the worst child welfare systems in the country one of the best, and that's what I hope to see happen. I mean, I'm, I am going to continue to advocate strongly for everything this director is asking for so that we can see our child to caseworker ratios come down, we can work on our adult protective services division, we can make sure we're staffed up properly for when the new intake process takes place. Of DSS also mentioned that there would be a they will be rolling out a disaster snap program is what they call it to help flood victims next week. Those who live in counties that have been approved for that disaster assistance would receive money through a program to buy food. We'll have more for you on that at seven. Lauren. Thanks, Joyce. And Walterboro attorney Margie Bright Matthews has been elected to fill the state Senate seat of late Clementa Pinckney. Pinckney was shot and killed in the Charleston church shootings earlier this year. Matthews got almost 90 percent of the vote in yesterday's balloting in Senate District 45. She defeated Republican Al Fernandez, who is a small business owner, and Minister Matthews. And, and minister, excuse me, Matthews becomes the second woman now serving in the General Assembly. The other is Republican Katrina Sheely of Lexington. Well, the interim State Department of Transportation Secretary has been given the job permanently. The governor announced the latest cabinet appointment today. Christy Hall spent weeks directing repairs to nearly 600 roads and bridges washed out or damaged in this month's massive floods. Crews have fixed all but about 150 of those state roads. Hall is receiving high marks for her work after the floodwaters. We've got litigation pending and we had children dying. Well, the Department of Transportation also still has a board with seven of eight members picked by the legislature. Well, we've got a few new numbers today from the State Department of Transportation. 430 truckloads of debris had been picked up from four counties. Debris cleanup continued today in Sumter, Lexington, and Richland counties. And don't forget to separate your debris in, into categories as well. Also, a semi got struck under a Columbia Bridge this morning. It happened at the bridge where the train tracks go over Whaley Street, not far from USC's campus. A sign posted on the bridge says it has a clearance of 12 feet 2 inches. Police have not yet said what led up to the incident or if there were any citations given. Well, the State Fair is continuing today into tonight, and the weather, it is just perfect out there. And our sports director, Reggie Anderson, is out there, and hopefully he's enjoying some of those sights and sounds and food. Reggie? Well, the American Cancer Society is revising its advice on when women should start getting mammograms and how often. The updated guidelines recommend annual breast cancer screenings at age 45 instead of 40 and switching to every other year after the age of 55. The study is causing some confusion among women who are now wondering when to start having mammograms and how much of the screening is needed. So we asked Dr. Abigail Smith to come out and uh, help us clear up some of that confusion. Thank you for joining us. Yes, Dr. Absolutely. Smith. Thank uh, you. First question, the organizations, you know, they say they, they disagree on when to begin mammograms. Um, some say 40. Now they're saying 45 is what the American Cancer Society is, is recommending. Mm -hmm. But what will you tell your patients when they come in and see you? 
As an OBGYN, we tend to look to ACOG, which is the American Congress of Obstetrics and Gynecology, for our recommendations. And uh, thus far, they have continued to say age 40 for starting mammograms and continuing those yearly, even after age 50. Okay, so just like a precaution, I guess, at that mm -hmm. point. Um, but the American Cancer Society says that there might be some false positives and unnecessary callbacks for women um, under age 45. So what do you think about that? That certainly can be the case. Younger women do tend to have denser breast tissue and it can be more difficult to differentiate between something that's normal versus something that's more concerning. So they may end up getting more callbacks for, for further evaluation. Um, but nonetheless, we feel that the um, that there is value in mammograms before age 45. Okay. Okay. The study also states women don't need breast exams by their doctor. They can do them on their own. What do you think? Um, again, we still recommend doing yearly breast exams by one of the physicians. Um, I've had cases where I had a woman come in just for a regular annual exam and we found a lump and ultimately found out that she did have a breast cancer. So we still do have, you know, feel that there is a value in, in doing breast exams yearly. In addition, we um, continue to recommend doing self breast exams monthly. Um, and we teach patients how and when to best do those. Okay, so 40, 40, 45 is that age range, but what if you do have breast cancer uh, in your family? Um, generally speaking, yes, women who do have a family history of a breast cancer or a personal history of some of certain types of cancers may need to start their screening earlier. Every woman is different, and that's certainly a discussion that I would recommend having with your physician um, and, and sharing in, in when to start doing those evaluations. Okay, okay. So, uh, so I mean, you're a part of this big group. <laughs> what are the rest of the American College of uh, Obstetricians and Gynecologists guidelines saying about mammograms? So again, they continue to recommend starting mammograms at age 40 and uh, continuing after age 50 to do those yearly. Um, we do recommend self-breast awareness, self-breast exams, and um, we start doing clinical breast exams uh, yearly after age 19. Okay, all right. I appreciate you coming out and talking to us today. A lot Absolutely. of important information that women need to know, mm -hmm. especially if they're in that middle range uh, age there trying to figure out what's next. So, well, thanks so much for having me. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank that you. was Dr. Abigail. I'll send it back to you, JR.